Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the gold corner and currently weighing in at around $21,000 is Bitcoin, aka the digital gold. The challenger fighting out of the purple corner and weighing in at around $1,600 is Ethereum, aka the decentralized computer for the world. Let's get ready to rumble! But wait, as much as many people think that the two are competitors, it isn't quite that simple. Yes, both cryptocurrencies use blockchain technology, but Bitcoin's technology is limited to transactions, while Ethereum takes blockchain up a notch by adding smart contract capabilities. So not exactly an apples to apples comparison, right? In this video, we're going to take a look at what makes these projects similar, different, and also special in their own way. All right, let's get to it. But first, history time. Over a decade ago, a mysterious figure named Satoshi Nakamoto executed an idea that he had laid out in a white paper to create a cash system that's fully peer-to-peer. -peer. Satoshi was successful in his efforts and Bitcoin, which ushered in a new age, was born. An interesting fact is that Bitcoin was not the first time that someone thought of a decentralized virtual currency. However, it was the first time that the idea was implemented successfully. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the history of crypto, then check out this video where we go way back to the 80s and explore how cryptocurrencies came to be. Moving on, about six years down the line after Bitcoin's launch, entered Ethereum, an upgrade to the perceived limits of Bitcoin. Ethereum allowed developers to use the blockchain to process more than just cryptocurrency transactions. It enables the building and deploying of smart contracts and decentralized applications without interference from a third party. The network is powered by its native coin known as Ether, commonly abbreviated as ETH. Right off the bat, the two projects are different in some aspects, like the problem that they are each trying to solve. Bitcoin was created to provide a way for people to store and transfer value without any intermediaries. Ethereum, however, looks to solve a different problem. Like Bitcoin, Ether can be used as a digital currency, but that is not its primary purpose. The Ethereum platform was built to make it easier to create applications that aren't controlled by one entity through smart contracts. Therefore, it is able to do many things outside of serving as a store of value. Another significant difference is their consensus mechanisms. Bitcoin uses a proof of work consensus mechanism that requires miners to compete for the chance to be chosen to validate new transactions and add them to the blockchain. In the process, they are rewarded with Bitcoin. Ethereum, on the other hand, recently made the switch to proof of stake, which requires validators to stake ETH in order to create blocks and be rewarded with more ETH. Both consensus mechanisms have features and trade-offs that have been long debated, and the debate is unlikely to stop anytime soon. Borrowing from a tweet by Vitalik, the debate between POW and POS is one based on math, economics, and moral philosophy, and any simplistic answer on whether one is better than the other is probably wrong. Okay, then what about the numbers? So when uh, Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin, he installed a strict limit on the number of Bitcoin that could ever exist. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin. Now, on the contrary, Ethereum doesn't have a cap on the total number of tokens. That said, the number of ETH issued yearly has been steadily declining, which means that inflation isn't a major concern for Ethereum. Plus, if the Ethereum network usage passes a certain threshold, ETH can also become deflationary. Currently, Ethereum has a total of over 120 million coins in circulation, while Bitcoin has over 19 million coins in circulation. Multiplying these values by the price of each coin gives us their respective market capitalization as of making this video. So Bitcoin has a market cap of over 407 billion, more than double that of Ethereum, which sits at around 195 billion. 
Then lastly, of the two networks, Ethereum is the faster one. Bitcoin's blocks are verified and created roughly every 10 minutes. And this same process takes 10 to 20 seconds on the Ethereum network. While both networks suffer from scalability issues, this increased throughput enables Ethereum to handle on-chain transactions more rapidly than Bitcoin. Even so, both are making use of layer twos, such as optimistic or ZK rollups for Ethereum or the Lightning Network for Bitcoin in order to increase scalability and usability. Watch this video to find out more about one of Ethereum's biggest scaling solutions. All right, verdict time. Now the fact remains that the two biggest cryptocurrencies will often be pitted against each other However, this does not necessarily mean that they are competitors. At their core, Bitcoin and Ethereum were both born out of a shared goal to decentralize economies around the world. And most importantly, Bitcoin and Ethereum were designed to address these concerns in different but equally important ways. That said, blockchains nowadays find ways to interoperate in a way that is mutually beneficial and sustainable to both networks. Speaking of other blockchains, here is a more apples to apples comparison video where we pit one of the most popular smart contract platforms, Solana, against Ethereum. Click right here to watch.